welcome to the UC Davis Center for Neuroscience. My name is Charan Ranganath, and I'm PI at the UC Davis Dynamic Memory Lab. Hi, my name is Matthias Gruber. I'm a postdoctoral scholar here in the lab. And in this video, we would like to show you about our recent findings about how curiosity affects the brain and benefits learning. If we are interested in a particular topic, it's a lot easier to learn and retain information about it. Curiosity, the intrinsic motivation to acquire new knowledge, is important in all areas of life. In educational or occupational settings, teachers and managers need to capture their students' and employees' curiosity in order to work, make them perform well. Therefore, research on how curiosity can improve learning is important because it could potentially provide wide implications for the public. Despite the importance of curiosity in daily life, little is known about the, how the brain supports curiosity and how curiosity impacts learning. To study the effects of curiosity on learning, healthy individuals took part in a three-stage experiment. First, we started with a screening phase, in which participants rated how curious they are to learn the answers to a series of trivia questions. In the second phase of the experiment, the learning phase, we scan participants' brain activity using functional magnetic resonance imaging. During this phase, participants studied the answers to selected trivia questions. We were interested in brain activation when curiosity was elicited, that is, during the delay period when participants waited to see the answer. Critically, during the delay between question and answer, a picture of a neutral, unrelated face was shown. In the third phase of the experiment, participants performed a surprise memory test for all faces and trivia answers shown earlier. Our study revealed three major findings. First, as expected, when people were interested about a trivia answer, they remembered this information a lot better. But also, which was very surprising to us, the faces that were presented during a curiosity state, they were also remembered better once curiosity was aroused. And interestingly, we also saw these memory benefits after a 24-hour delay, so that the retention for this unrelated incidental information was better. In other words, curiosity seems to put the brain in a state that it's very conducive to learning. So you could think of it something like a vortex that draws in things that you're motivated to learn, but it draws in everything around it. The second finding was that we saw once curiosity was aroused, we saw increased activity in the nucleus accumbens and in the substantia nigra ventral tegmental area complex, the SNVTA. Other studies suggest that these are the areas that are recruited when people receive rewards or view reward-related items like money or food. On the graph here, we show that curiosity increases brain activity in these two areas, the nucleus accumbens shown on the top and the SNVTA shown on the bottom both highlighted in red. In both areas, you can see a positive relationship. The higher the curiosity rating depicted on the x-axis, the more activation in these regions depicted on the y-axis. This shows that intrinsic motivation, curiosity, actually recruits the very same brain areas that are heavily involved in tangible extrinsic motivation. So our third major finding was that when people were anticipating the answer to a question that they're highly curious about, we see activity increasing in the hippocampus. And this increase, in turn, is uh, predictive of people's ability to later on retain the information that they learned about the answers to these trivia questions. Now, this finding makes sense in light of a large body of research implicating the hippocampus and new learning. But what's surprising is that the activity in the hippocampus comes up when people are anticipating the answer. So it's almost like curiosity is warming up the hippocampus ahead of time. What's also interesting is that curiosity seems to increase interactions between the SNVTA and the hippocampus. And these interactions are related to people's ability to learn these interesting materials and also uninteresting materials that are presented while people are in a curious state. So putting it all together, curiosity seems to increase interactions between the SNVTA and the hippocampus, and that seems to put the brain in a state that's more likely to retain new information, even if that information is not what got you curious in the first place. So there might be some important real-world implications of these findings. So for instance, we think that aging is probably affecting dopamine transmission in the brain. And we're pretty sure that dopamine transmission is affected in neurological disorders like Parkinson's disease or in psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia or depression. 
And so it's possible that these changes impact people's curiosity and their motivation to learn. Now the flip side of this is that we might be able to improve memory through behavioral techniques that stimulate curiosity, or maybe through pharmacological interventions that actually could stimulate dopamine transmission. Uh, the results also suggest some ways that maybe we could improve real-world learning in the classroom. So for instance, teachers often have to teach material that's boring or that students aren't really interested in. I know I do. And so our data suggests that by first getting students excited about what they're motivated to learn, we might actually be able to improve learning of the less interesting material. So in other words, we may be able to improve education by harnessing the power of students' curiosity. Thank you for watching. If we now spark your curiosity as well, and you would like to know more about our study, please check out our paper.